Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here and Jägermeister. Not really. But it does say Jägermeister on the beer. It's a Das Jägermeister beer from Sloop Brewing. I've actually kind of wanted somebody to do some kind of Jägermeister influenced beer for like a criminally long time. Um, not that I like Jägermeister, I just think there's a cool kind of like herbaceous kind of botanical thing that I think would work really, really well for like some kind of barrel-aged stout or something like that, even though Jägermeister really isn't barrel-aged, just, uh, you know, uh, is it a liqueur or a cordial? I'm not quite sure what it is as far as liquor goes, but it's not a barrel-aged product. Gin isn't a barrel-aged product, and they, they do gin barrel-aged stuff, so there's some way they could do that stuff. So I even, always envisioned somebody doing some kind of Jägermeister influenced beer, but I always thought it was going to come in like a barley wine stout kind of barrel age kind of product. We're talking about hazy. Okay. Now what is this beer? A Sloop Brewing presents Das Jägermeister beer. It's a hazy India pale ale with orange, orange zest and ginger. So a bit of what goes into Jägermeister actually says explicitly does not contain Jägermeister, you know, uh, but is a hazy exploration of Jägermeister's secret and not so secret botanicals. Um, this is 6.5%. Mm, it says here with a selection of Jägermeister's unique blend of roots, herbs, and spices, orange zest, and ginger. So I don't know if it's like orange zest and ginger is on top of the. Jägermeister portion of the show here, or if it's just orange zest and ginger is the portion of the show that comes from them. Um, there's no date in this can, but I'm pretty sure this is like relatively new. Uh, when I kind of peeked at it on Untapped, I think I saw like May might have been like the earliest kind of mention of this beer. It might have even been in like on draft in house kind of stuff at Sloop. So if that's the case, you're talking about give or take about a month old. In combination with me reviewing this beer is that glassware. I found the most pretentious piece of glassware I've ever seen in my life. I went to uh, Restore and I saw this thing. And, uh, you know, first glance, my wife's like, oh, you got a candy dish. And I was like, I don't think it's a candy dish. I actually think this is a drinking vessel because there was a set of these there. I only picked up one of them. And this, by far and away, is the most obnoxious, pretentious glass I've ever seen in my life. You gotta do like a whole pinkies up kind of thing when you do this. Kind of flourish that pinky. Um, I gotta review something out of it, so it's gonna come in here. It's gonna be a horrible glass to review out of. I'm not gonna be able to get a big swirl out of it. Nose is probably gonna not be all that great. But such is life, you know? So we'll see what's up. I don't even know how to pour in this goddamn thing. Uh, so let's do this. Let's give it a gentle pour along the edge. Actually, I'm doing freaking fantastically on this weirdly bonkers odd glass. Let's go about there. That looks about right to me. <laughs> I like how it looks. What do you want from me? Um, Label-wise, you know, it is Sloop. It's They're very much font-driven with what they do. Um, the whole Sloop Brewing font is very kind of different from their base kind of text font, but they're very distinct in what they do. So, even though Sloop isn't so much like, there's not a very aggressive kind of logo for them. Um, it is this logo back here, which I don't think they use all that often. Um, yeah, you always know Sloop here from distance. So, yeah, I don't mind that branding. And as far as this beer goes, let's give it a little bit of a, a little jiggly whirl like that. I spilled it already. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, gotta get the pinkies out like that. Hey, yeah, I mean, it looks all the part of a big old hazy. Just uh, dense, rich, but not like super turbid or anything like that. So let's dive in for a nose. I mean, it really does smell like a hazy IPA. If you're going to tell me there's ginger in here, you're going to tell me there's orange peel in here, I could probably tell you that that probably exists in other beers. Um, but it smells like a hazy IPA. There's nothing kind of for someone that, you know, you know, I graduated high school in the early 90s, went to college, lived through that Jägermeister life. Not that I hate Jägermeister, I can drink it and be fine with it, but there's no kind of like, like nausea inducingness to it. You know, you, we all have that kind of alcohol that we drank when we were younger, minus Southern Comfort, um, that we smell and we're like, get a little 
<laughs> get a little something here going on. Not that Jägermeister is like that for me, but it very much brings back those old school kind of vibes of just like, yeah, that's just getting drunk juice. This just smells like a big hazy IPA with a bit of ginger, a bit of orange going on, but that's not anything outside the ordinary when it comes to hazy. So it smells the part of a hazy. Let's see what it tastes like. Cheers, y'all. Okay, I think the ginger is actually part of this. Now, there's going to be a caveat to that. We'll get to the end. This is definitely a ginger component. You're going to sit here and tell me there's orange peel, orange zest. This, sure, fine. I could see this being a zero zest beer, but at the same time, I could see that being in there. I think you get a lot of that from these kind of beers to begin with. Um, It's got a classic kind of like, I say sloopiness to it, because I think a lot of sloop IPAs tend to be a little bit more kind of snappy um, in drinkability than more turbid, and that's kind of how this goes here. Very much tastes like um, sloops. What's their flagship? Oh my god, I've drank it a thousand times. I don't know why I can't remember. Their flagship hazy. That comes in 12 packs, that comes in, you know, 15 packs, all that kind of stuff. That, um, it, it very much is that beer, um, but with a little bit of adjunct going on. It comes off maybe a skos thinner, there's a little bit of carbonic acid going on. Soup bomb? Soup bomb, right? Is that what it's called? But with that added component of that little bit of ginger going on. It's very readily apparent there's ginger here for me. And this is where that caveat I talked about earlier kind of comes into play. I'm hypersensitive to ginger. So if you drink this and you go, I didn't really get much ginger. I don't know what this guy's talking about. That could be totally the case. I'm just hypersensitive to ginger. ginger. Like real ginger. It just kind of like reaches out and kind of grabs me. Um, so while I get this in this beer, I could see a lot of people not really getting it here. So that's more me than anybody else. But it comes off as a nice hazy. I know it's got a little bit of drinkability to it. Again, you're talking about six and change, not a big, huge um, ABV on this thing. But at the same time, um, it comes off as, like, again, sloop bomby kind of with a little added subtle twist to it. Is it anything? Does it resemble anything like Jägermeister to me? Not really. Jägermeister does have this big ginger component, so for me, being very sensitive, it really comes off for me, but in this beer I get it, but I know other people might not. It doesn't have that botanical herbaceousness that I pretty much hang my hat on when it comes to Jägermeister. Again, not that I'm a big Jägermeister person, but if I'm going to sit here and talk about Jägermeister in a more kind of layman's terms kind of thing for a lot of people that don't drink it and how I experience it, Recola. Recola cough drops, if you take that herbaceousness that you get from Recola cough drops and you distill it down into something that is more drinkable, because <laughs> Recola is pretty aggressive, that's how Jägermeister comes off for me, and I don't really get that here. Does it make it a bad beer? No, but it has Jägermeister on her, it has name on her, and has their logo on her, so obviously it is like thumbs up sanctioned by Jägermeister. It's a fun beer, it's a tasty beer. It's semi kind of Jaegermeister y adjacent. Sure, fine. Uh, tasty beard nonetheless. You know, as far as hazy goes, it's not going to rewrite the book, but such as, um, such as hazies, they're all very much kind of floating on fringes, and some do better than others, and some don't. Um, so, yeah, a fun pickup. I saw it, I had to pick it up, give it a review, and see what's what. Uh, is it one of the better hazy pale ales? Hazy IPA, you know, six and changes at 6.5? Yes, that's right where IPA starts off. Uh, it's in a conversation, not towards the top. It's a tasty beer. I had a four pack. They're going to go down pretty easy. Valued availability, I want to say 15 bucks. I paid for this for a four pack and leave you with it if you like what we like this. If you like hazy IPA and you want a little bit of that ginger twist on there, again, keep in mind that I'm hypersensitive, so it might not be there as impactful it is for, for me as it will be for you. Um, Sloop, have you been to the brewery? I've never been. I've passed by it multiple times. I used to go to Rhinebeck quite a bit. Um, for my wife, she does this, like, she does a lot of stuff with, like, yarn and cheaps, and there's a big festival up there, and I've passed by, you know, going to Suarez and going to Industrial Arts and all that stuff. I actually never went there. I know they had two spots. I believe they only have one now. Have you been to the brewery? Have you had a bunch of their beers? 
have you had this release? What did you think? Was there any ginger for you there? Is there something different than what I had spouted out of my mouth hole? All that fun stuff down there. So there you go. We're reviewing the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you enjoyed my little pretentious glassware. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.